welcome to this gouache painting tutorial. Today we're gonna paint some very fall appropriate flowers. The big ones are some sort of chrysanthemums and I promise that it's actually much easier to paint than it looks. So even if you're more of a beginner, I think you could definitely give this a go. We're gonna create a dark background which is not necessary. You could totally paint the same thing against a white background too and save some time from a few extra steps. But anyway, I'm gonna use this Etcher's Lab B5 size watercolor journal today and then I'm first lining this smaller rectangle with a washi tape that we're gonna color with the black background paint. I wanted the flowers and leaves in this picture to go slightly over the background edges, so I left quite a lot of white space around this black area. Then I'm just using a plastic paint palette for this black paint here first so that we won't need to mess up all the other colors with it. And then we're just gonna start adding this to the paper. I think it's the easiest to apply background colors with a flat brush by just quickly going back and forward to cover the whole area. You also want to add enough water to the paint so that it becomes easier to blend, but not to the point that it's going to make the paint too runny and see-through. Be sure to also go over all the edges for any small spots you might have missed. And then I added some clips to the corners of the page to prevent it from curling while this paint is drying. I took a small break here to let the background completely dry, which is important, especially when working with a pure black color. And if you have any imperfections on the edges after removing the washi tapes, like I did here, you can always fix those with a white paint or a white pen. But now that we finally have the background ready, I personally like to start with some very quick pencil guidelines. I know it's probably not ideal to draw on top of the background we already painted, because it will be kind of difficult to erase these lines later. But the main thing I wanted to mark here is the placement and the size of the bigger flowers. So you can see that I drew this ball looking shape to the middle and then just some very rough lines going away from it, which will indicate the longer petals. I also sketched out a few smaller flowers and even added some of the bigger leaf shapes so that I have some sort of a plan moving forward with this picture. But after that, it's finally time to start with the coloring part. And as always, you can replace any of these colors I'm using with similar ones you have at home or use a few different shades to mix something similar. So what we need is a black and white as always, then some kind of green tone and some brownish oranges or peach tones for the flowers. We're gonna start the painting with the bigger flowers and as a first step, I mixed this quite dark brown-orange color that I'm just gonna add as a background layer to the deepest folds of the flowers. I think usually a good system to work with gouache paints is to start with the darkest colors and then add lighter and lighter layers on top. So this is just going to be the shade that will kind of show under the petals and create some shadowy appearance. But after doing that, we'll mix the main flower color and I went with this peachy orange shade. I think it's a good idea to keep the paint consistency pretty thick when we're working with a dark background and this is also something where your gouache paint quality might affect a little bit. So if you know that you have a hard time keeping the colors pigmented, maybe skipping the black background is a better idea. Or you could always use black paper to paint on, which won't mix with the lighter colors in the same way. 
Anyway, at this step, I took this medium sized round brush and I'm starting to draw these individual petal strokes from the outside towards the middle. I was trying to be pretty careful here and really focus on keeping the angles right and the shapes very clean. And I also wanted there to be some variation in the petals. So some of them can be a little shorter and some a little longer and also keeping the distances between the different petals slightly different will create a more natural look to the flower. If any of your strokes look too sheer or if there are any imperfections, you can always just add another layer on top after the first one has slightly dried. I think at this point, this could easily be sunflowers. I think that's what the shape reminds me of. But adding the petals in the middle will completely change the look of the flower. So the middle strokes might feel a little bit trickier, but I think imagining this ball or almost like an onion shape makes it somewhat easier. So I switched to a slightly smaller brush at this point to control the strokes a little bit better. And I also tried to leave some of the darker background showing between the petals. I think this just helps to separate them a little bit, but this is all something we can polish and fix later. So please don't worry too much about this step. Again, I thought it was easier to work from the long end of the petal towards the middle. And then I added just a few of these extra petals and some short ones between the long outside ones and the inner onion shape. After the first flower, we're gonna do the exact same thing to the second one, and after that also paint all the smaller ones. I decided to keep it pretty loose with these small flowers, so I just mainly added some upwards strokes and then a few flyaway petals to the side. And I actually really liked the loose and sketchy look of the flowers at this stage, so you could definitely just leave it here and move on to the leaves, but I'm gonna show how I tried adding a little bit more definition and detail to the flowers with these next few steps. So now we're gonna mix even lighter color than the one we just used. So I mixed more of the peach color on top of the already existing one. And then with a smaller brush, I started to paint these lighter petal strokes pretty much on top of the strokes we added before. So the goal here is to leave some of the original color showing and add these lighter strokes kind of as highlights to the petals. So you could choose one side of the flower where you add more of these lighter colors. I think I did a little bit better job demonstrating this with the second flower. And you'll see how this layering brings out the individual petal shapes a little bit better.
I also layered some of the lighter colors to the smaller flowers and you can also use this to cover any mistakes or uneven paint strokes from the first layers. After this, I took out this small detailing brush and decided to intensify some of the shadowy parts and kind of outline some of the petals a little bit, especially around the deeper fold parts. And I used this burnt sienna color first, but didn't think it was dark enough. So I actually switched to this darker brown to add more intensity to the shadows. Again, this is a completely optional step and it's just something that's going to help to separate these individual petal shapes from each other. If you have more time and you really want to add details to the flowers, you could keep repeating these steps with some lighter and darker tones to add even more shadows and highlights, but I chose to keep it a little bit more simple here and after the dark color, I just went with this last round of some light highlights that I only applied to the lighter sides of the flowers. But after that, we have the main flowers ready and now it's time to start painting the leaves and the rest of the filler details. I mixed a little bit of blue, black and white to my green shade to make it slightly cooler and more muted. And I painted all the leaf shapes first with this one shade that we're then gonna start editing with different color layers the same way as we did on the flowers. I didn't want to be too specific with these leaves, so I went with some pretty easy shapes. I also tried to distribute them pretty evenly around the page so that the whole thing would look as balanced as possible. I also added some stems coming from the flowers. And lastly, these smaller leaves that will add some variation to the shape sizes. But after these first shapes are done, I mix a little bit more black and blue to my color and then started to first paint some green parts under the small flowers and then used the shade to add some shadows, mainly to the inner parts of the leaves. 
there's no right or wrong way to do this part. You can really add whatever shadows or highlight patterns to the leaves as you like. And you can see that I mix it up quite a bit too. So I usually like to add some kind of line to the center of the leaf, maybe a few extra ones as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing with a lighter color. I decided to switch back to the small detailing brush to keep these light strokes a little bit sharper. And then later I decided to also color all the smaller leaves with a much lighter green shade because I felt like we needed a little bit more color contrast in this picture overall. Then as the finishing step, which is also completely optional, I decided to add a few smaller white flowers here and there to make this picture look a little bit fuller and more interesting. I went with these very standard five petal flower shapes and tried to leave some black in the middle and also kind of in between the petals to make the shapes stand out a little bit better. And then if you feel like there are any empty corners or spaces in your picture, you can always add a few more leaves or flowers there to balance things out. But that's finally all for this full flower arrangement with gouache paints. I really hope you enjoyed watching this and will give it a go. And as always, I think this picture would work with so many different color combinations and also without the black background, though it does make the lighter colors pop very nicely. If this was your first time around here and you'd like to stay tuned for more, definitely consider subscribing. But I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll have an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.